Education, and he is the Special Education Program Chair at Toro University in Vallejo, California. And he has worked in the classroom as a teacher with people with a variety of disabilities, and he has published a number of books on um, everything from transition to adult life for persons with disabilities and uh, functional assessments and program development for problem behavior and also positive behavior supports in the classrooms and schools. Um, and Dr. Story, first of all, welcome. Thank you for having me. And it's good to have you here. And let's talk a little bit about your newest book is called Positive Behavior Supports for Adults with Disabilities in Employment, Community, and Residential Settings, Practical Strategies That Work. Tell us a little bit, can you give us a summary of what that book is about? Sure, it's trying to give some basic um, how-to information for support providers such as job coaches, teachers, uh, residential staff on how to analyze positive behavior supports and then develop some basic interventions to support the person in whatever setting they're in, you know, employment, residential, or community. And Dr. Story, you know, we, we talk to people so often, Nancy and I are both autism parents, and the word positive supports, uh, positive behavior supports, it gets batted around a lot, but I, I find that a lot of people don't really understand what that means. Can you tell us what the difference between a positive behavior support is and just behavior support? Sure, the positive behavior support is kind of a two-step process. First is analyzing why the individual is engaging in the problem behavior. There's two basic functions. One is to get something and the other one is to avoid something. And once you understand that, then you can develop positive behavior supports. And those are skill building positive behavior. So say for instance, an individual is uh, becoming aggressive in order to get attention from a staff person. Well, if you understand that the function is to get attention, then you can develop positive supports for that individual on how to get attention in a socially appropriate manner that doesn't involve aggression. So then they can get the attention but not have to be aggressive in order to do it. So you're, you're building skills for the individual that are positive. So that's why it's positive behavior supports. Well, and I think in our punishment-driven society, uh, it's a real mental shift for people to think in this way. But I, I'm sure uh, you could talk to us a little bit about why this is so effective and how effective is it? It's very effective. It's the most effective intervention that's out there for problem behaviors. You're, you're right, the punishment strategies are not very effective because they're, they're only focused on decreasing behaviors. Well, if a person's becoming aggressive to get attention and you decrease or punish that aggressive behavior, then they have no way to get attention. So they may come up with another inappropriate or undesirable manner to get the attention, such as screaming or uh, destruction of property or something. So you're not teaching them the positive skills that they need to be successful in that situation. So. Uh, positive Behavior Supports has a very strong empirical research base that is very effective. So, uh, Dr. Story, how, aside from the fact that you have this book, uh, how are you getting this information out to the various agencies and organizations and employers that are going to be working with particularly the young adults with disabilities that are coming into the workforce how are you getting this word out on uh, how effective this strategy is? Well, one way is we have a teacher training program here at Toro. So we have a class on positive behavior supports and also a class on advanced positive behavior supports that's more focused on school-wide positive behavior supports and mental health services. Uh, so all the students in the program take those two classes so they get the foundation in positive behavior supports. And then on a personal level, I uh, present at conferences or to parent groups or, or so on. Uh, I do consulting with different agencies, the regional center staff and so on. So we try to get word out there the best we can. Wonderful. And where can people buy this book, Dr. Story? Uh, on Amazon or the publisher is uh, Charles Thomas. You can go on their website and um, or Barnes and Noble, so it's available on the web or through the, the publisher. 
I want to take just a second and talk about another book that you have, The Road Ahead, Transition to Adult Life for Persons with Disabilities. You know, this is a topic that our community is talking about all the